Yeah, a very big welcome to you, my dear Cancer, and always a very big welcome to the other zodiac signs that felt like this new moon has a message for them as well. The dogs agree. <laughs> so, the sun and the moon, the new moon, are in your sign. So you're getting quite, from two opposite energies, a message. And it's in your card. You have the new moon and you have the sun here, pulling you out of the city, pulling you into the success, without rains, without anything. You are here sitting in your cube, in your square that comes from the emperor. So you have evolved into the seven, out of the stability, out of the first dimension, which is the square, into now an understanding that you, only you, can create whatever it is you want to create. And you have today the new moon and the sun with you. Even though we don't see the new moon, it doesn't matter. He's full. The sun, always full. Just understand that the earth is in between. And so the message here is very clear. You got to plant a seed. Very important in the next few days when you get this video, plant a seed, meditate, see what you want to see evolve in your next full moon, which is in December. Now I'm doing these readings because I'm creating my own tarot deck combined with yoga position. That's why it's also the title uh, Tarot Yoga Inspiration. There are inspirations, there are not predictions. They are here to help you maybe see something that you cannot see, right? Sometimes life is like that, that we are stuck in something or we're in a situation we need a little help. And these cards, I notice it more and more, are here to help us, are here to really inspire us to become a self help individual, an individual that is saying, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to become a better person, a better version of yesterday, right? Or even just a few minutes ago. So the card that I created here in the yoga position is Ashva Sanchalan Asana. Of course, it's <laughs> how can you not, right? You are the horse, the high lounge, you are successful, you push yourself out there. And you be successful when you unite the dualities, when you bring them together, you have the faces that create, when they look at each other, the holy grail. But in the end, when they turn, they want to look at where they want to go. Not always look at each other, but when they looking into the same direction where they want to grow into. And that's what they're doing here as well. They're looking at each other and they're like, wow, yes. Here I am facing my future and my past self in the present moment. The lungs, which is your body part, the ribs or the chat, the fence that is protecting your lungs and a dome. I created it like a dome, like that's the only place we can really breathe in. The higher up we go, the more the air gets thin and we cannot breathe it in anymore. Now. You are a cardinal sign and you are all about feelings. You are all about sensitivity within the family and your last reading now, because this is a path, right? Your last reading where the sun was in Gemini, in the lovers, the message was listen carefully and see from within what kind of thoughts affect your healing. So you had the six to the lovers, the healing. You had the soul, I think was also a six. And then you had this eye and I found it very fascinating that you twice. Here you look within, you don't see the eyes, but then here you have these two eyes that are really like, okay, I want to see what is happening here and I want to learn. I have altogether 20 
tarot and oracle decks here and of course I line them up in three rows so I don't read past, present, future. If you feel that's working for you, please feel free to do that. I take a picture at the end and I have listed all the cards that I'm using down in the description and also the court cards, which is for you, the Queen of Cups. You're sitting here at the shore looking at your cup and loving it. Your birthday, if it's between June 10th and July 12th, this is your card, your court card. If your birthday is before, please look in the description below. Okay, so let's begin. Here we have from the Visconti Sforza Tarot, a beautiful story. The family Visconti had a daughter and the family Sforza had a son. And of course, money um, married wealth, money married power. And here we see the Ten of Cups. Now, very interesting, we have one, two, three rows. It's almost saying body, mind and spirit three times are connected, right? You have here the dark, here the white, and in the center are you. So there are three rows that say, yes, there's a fulfillment. And on top of it, you have even the Ace of Cup spilling down from the highest, from the Creator, from Keter, from the Crown, all over the Nine into then the Ten. So you have Nine of Cups, you have the Lucky card, and on top of it, you have the Ace of Cups, which then creates the Ten of Cups, which is Mars and Pisces, which is the Rainbow of Hope, which is the couple that comes together and together they can create something much more bigger. But what it's really saying is that you within yourself are creating this happiness. You must not rely on another person ever. And in a way, this is what this couple did. Right back then, when money married power or the other way around, mostly it wasn't a love story, but they respected each other. And after 10 years, they had an artist painting those 78 cards um, of them. When you see a male character in the tarot, it's him. And when you see a female character, it's her. And it's such a beautiful, everlasting story. The 15th century were these cards created. And here I am talking about it in the 21st century. So it's 600 years later, right? So it connected, of course, to the six, which is the holy symbol. Someone is unhappy here. We have a... Um, playground here in the front and when the mom needs to go home the children are never happy so I get a lot of crying here where the mom is forcing the child no we need to go home and the child is like no I want to play right play it's like yes you want to keep this you want to have this and you love it now here comes Oswald Worth uh, French Swiss he use his cards in the Kabbalistic Rose Cross Order that was formed 1888 in France, Paris. You got the Hermit. The Hermit is looking at the Nine Cups and is highlighting your happiness that you created from within. And he's literally saying, oh my God, and now you're getting another one. You're getting a happiness. You're getting everything you ever wanted in this sun and new moon in cancer it's this yes i am deserving it i have listened carefully last time what kind of thoughts affect my healing and you changed it and here you are having the hermit highlighting this picture and saying yes how wonderful you are exceptional you are a leader in the healing grounds then comes the Hermetic Tarot, black and white, and this was used of the Order of the Golden Dawn, also formed 1888 in England. 
Now why I'm using this one is because um, Arthur Wade and Alistair Crawley both were in this order and then later on created their own tarot decks. So of course I needed to know uh, about this deck and include it. And so here comes the Queen of Pentacles. She's the Queen of the Thrones of Earth, a very stable, very grounded Capricorn. And it's telling me, yes, this is your opposite energy, right? Opposite of you is Capricorn. And it's speaking about in your next full moon in December, you are going to really feel whatever it is that you already did right here, whatever it is that you feel there's a full completion, you will live it until the next full moon, right? You're already living it now and more to come, more stability and more happiness to come to you. And then comes uh, Arthur Way. So this one is for demonstration and of course this one is also for demonstration, right? Here, the Four of Swords, which is Jupiter in Libra, is speaking about pulling yourself back, knowing that these three swords are like, again, body, mind and soul. But you support it by one thought, you support it by this one, and you are retrieving, you're meditating, because he's a knight who has to go out and work for the king, and sometimes it was deadly because the swords are deadly. And so it's saying, yes, listen carefully and see from within what kind of thoughts are affecting your healing. If you do not change that, they can kill you. And so you really took this to heart, the last reading, and you're really saying, okay, I want to know why I think a certain way, because this is a deep spiritual resting, a deep spiritual knowing that the order within the number four is given if you find your own peace within that order, within that square, which is here, this square, which is the chariot. The chariot is powerful, <clears throat> as long as you move it, as long as you know you have the power to move the number four, the stability, the groundedness. Then, of course, here comes Alistair Crawley, the Two of Cups, which is Venus in Cancer. Now, you love this card because it's the lovers. You are seeing the two dolphins intertwined giving life to this lotus flower and the two, the yoni lingam, the black and the white, that right and left side, the two waning and waxing moon on your shoulder, that knowledge of two cups, two cups now making it that the ten of cups are giving these two of cups twelve cups. I mean, you have 12 cups here, right? And you really are feeling that there is a sharing in the relationship. There is a deep knowledge being given to each other and a love relationship intertwined. And the 12 is a very holy number, right? The 12 is the 12 zodiac signs, the 12 apostles. It's always the same. It's like that's which governing us above us the stars which you are connected very much to. Now, these were created 1920 and published and the story here to Alistair Crowley 22 years later after his death, they were published 1969 and we have 22 major arcana. So the people after quite created a message with that one. Here, the 1888 date also is a message. One, the magician, and 
three times the eight, the power to know that the Earth star is above you, that you know always something is empowered, something is giving you a true power when you unite black and white, when you come into the gray zone. And of course, Arthur Waite became famous because he started not to only arrange the minor arcanas, but he also added now people into the pictures and of course the tarot became like really um, evolved. I mean it really became uh, famous because people all of a sudden were able to relate to it. 1970, Salvador Dali, a Spanish artist, is Seven of Cups. Now, you have 12 cups and you get another seven. That is 19, which creates the holy number 10. And we have 10 uh, points on the Tree of Life. They're also called Sephirots, Knowledge, Wisdom. And here you have the number seven of cups, which is the illusion Venus in Scorpio. So you have four here, which is in a way the stability, the four with those swords, right? And you have another three, which is again the Trinity above. So these three, you could truly believe that yes, they make you happy, but they are an illusion as well. Because Netzach is a communication of a spiritual message that you cannot take as something that you now relate in such a level to it that you become um, a little snobbish, right? There is a spiritual snobbishness out there. Oh well, I'm teaching this. Oh well, i am worked with this uh, teacher. No, even the farmer that has never heard about any teaching sometimes is more holy than the holiest of the holiest, right? So this is what the illusionary success is telling you. So you have the 12 and the 7, which is 19 uh, cups all together, which then creates, of course, a 10, which connects to the wheel of fortune, the karmic wheel that is constantly spinning. The Golden Dawn Tarot that existed before the Hermetic Tarot. Now Robert Wang recreated the Tarot that existed before the Hermetic Tarot and it's because it was never published, right? Some of these people never wanted their cards to be out in the world and being published. But 1978, he recreated them with Israel, very holy. Also, the back is very specific, very, very beautiful, powerful cards that speak about, well, um, this was the influence on this one, but it was printed much, much later. And so here comes the number three the Empress. And you see the Empress sitting here on her throne. The Empress is the female connection of, we understand from a female point that fertility only happens when two come together, when two people come together and create this holy triangle, right? The, th the three swords, the three cups up here and the three here within the head and the heads of the Sphinx, the three, the Holy Three, the Trinity that is giving you always the body, mind, spirit uh, experience. And so the Empress is speaking about, yes, just watch always your emotions because they are here so that you can learn to control them, to understand them and not be controlled by them. Hermann Handel, a German artist, very powerful story. He was in World War II fighting 
and in the end then got prisoned but he was in the end saved by a Russian Jewish soldier. That experience marked him and he then uh, later on painted the tarot and here comes Nut. Nut is the mother of sorts in the south, Nut. So you see here I have French, l'eremite, right? This is a French word for le, uh, the hermit. I have English, I have German and I have Spanish cards here, right? And of course these are Italian. So I have Italian, French, English, German and Spanish cards here. And you see that she is the Queen of Swords, the one sword that is supporting you. You're lying on your coffin and each soldier back then had to create their own coffin so that when they died they would be put in there and sometimes they lie in there to rest for a moment and to imagine their own death. So Nut is here and saying remember whenever you fight, whenever you try to bring these three swords together, these three thoughts that are um, yeah, occupying you, remember you can always bring yourself into an understanding of the Queen of Swords. She is the sky, she's the night sky. See, she's exactly this curtain up here. You see all the little stars that he painted here. And in Egypt, you would see her like this, in this shape. And then also, if you lie on the bottom, you would see her like that. So if he lies here, he sees her like this. You, who's standing, you see her like that, right? Very interesting that this is actually coming up. Very powerful. I've never seen this kind of interaction with uh, these two cards, right? Then, of course, 1988, 100 years later of the Oswald Worth Tarot. And of course, after the um, Hermetic Tarot comes the medicine woman, the death card, the sunset, and these are native Indian cards, very beautiful, very differently, very poetic the way they uh, put the stories here in these cards. It's Death is a ritual, death is to climb up into your higher consciousness, let go of the body and know that a new path is beginning, that you are um, becoming free. You're becoming free in the way you are thinking about uh, life. You are realizing that you have to liberate yourself sometimes from the Venus in Scorpio, because this is Scorpio, and Venus in Scorpio is making you feel that this is the most important thing there is to love another person. Of course it's important because it brings the next generation forward, but it's not the most important. The most important is that you understand that everything is constantly coming and going, shifting and changing, and that you sometimes have to also totally let go of your physical body. The second row comes you and behind you, the number nine, the amber. And the amber is a beautiful crystal that is telling you, yes, you have within you now a 99 portal. And in this 99 portal, you understand very strongly, you are the light, you are the healing of your family constellation. Only you can help yourself to really understand the karmic consequences your family is bringing into your life, right? And of course, I see now the 13 here with this four. It's a four, four portal. Two times four is helping you to understand that there's a creativity in your heart, in that which evolves, in that which uh, makes our heart beat, which is love, right? When we're in love with someone, it's very difficult to actually leave this plane 
because we feel so connected with that person we don't really want to go so you're learning if you create your own family with that person that this love is beautiful but we also in the end have to let go of that and that is giving you then the next card which is here the 20 under my umbrella so the amber card of your family is saying yes you did have quite some friends in your life you had someone that protected you and you protected them and it's a very soulful relationship because birds are always connected with a higher consciousness and they are there for each other and this card is literally telling you yeah you have someone that is really there for you and the next six of wands is speaking about you getting to a place of action that is helping you Jupiter and Leo helping you to move forward to understand that life is about taking chances is about you knowing whatever it is that you want to do you you have no other ones and you don't have another six whatever it is, it is that you want to do do it right because for some reason i see you quite protected you had some difficulties and you had some illusions popped right but nevertheless you have done quite the work and you have a relationship or a friendship that is supporting your celebration your consciousness your christ consciousness because the six is always the hexagram is always the uniting of the male triangle and the female triangle right the holy trinity then the rainbow comes and up here when you are celebrating you are able to see the rainbow and follow the path of the 41 41 is a five there is no other five here and the five is connecting you to the higher fund to a spiritual movement to a spiritual knowledge that holds all paths in it because that's what the rainbow does the rainbow goes from red to orange to yellow to green to uh, blue to purple to uh, violet right so it's like this seven basic colors and you say okay i'm taking the rainbow forward and i am going to create um uh, something significant because the horse is coming here when the moon is again waxing which is beginning actually right after this reading right so the horse is an earth animal and of course is the last animal momentum freedom expansive energy and force when in balance achieves anything and never gives up right so you caught the momentum you caught the fact that you supported you caught the moment that you done your work you caught the moment that you observe how you talk to yourself because it's affecting your healing and you are moving forward you are taking the chance to really be a leader a horse energy is uh someone very powerful is a knight is understanding that death can be around the corner that death can always be there and I need to observe and watch when I go out there and use my mind, use my thoughts because I know I have to use that one thought when I look up into the sky and I see the three stages of the sun um, setting, rising and um, staying on, on in the peak, right? So the horse is here to give you the power to again have a Libra speaking to you, looking forward, having that one sword, having that one sword, that one thought that's supporting you, that even though you're dying, you know, you're not really dying, you're coming back and you will always have these three swords, you will always have the three cups, 
you will always have body, mind and soul resurrecting, coming up and knowing, yes, I can go out there and start all over again. And the last row here, very beautiful, is talking about precision. The desire to do things precisely is useful as long as it does not devolve into rigidity. The number 69 which is where these cards were printed, 1969. And 69 is a very sexual uh, card. The 6 and the 9 looks like a couple is pl uh, pleasuring each other. And so it's a, for a reason that they waited until then and 22 years, of course. It's like it's very symbolic. But 69 is the card number 15, which is then connecting you back to your full moon, to um, Capricorn, right? That's the devil, that's when we realize we have to overcome energies that sometimes keep us here in this dimension. And you are realizing that you want to get out of this dimension. You're realizing up here in the sky you can see so that this native Indian can see well everything comes and go here is that circle that you see this circle line here out of this one and he's going and seeing another dimension the same way when he was lying in his coffin he saw her and now you see her from that it's this half right it's this half the sky, right? It's the sky is that going above and it's very interesting. It makes me realize that this, the lungs, the sky until a certain extent out of the earth, that's where we can breathe. The moment we put our head outside of this, we cannot breathe anymore. But for some reason, you have overcome that because you have very powerfully understood something and of course I see now also here the two zero right that this relationship is also a friendship is also quite profoundly you are here for each other whoever that is of course it could be a Virgo it could be um, a Capricorn it could be a Libra it could be a Scorpio and it could be a Taurus because you got the king of pentacles but the female king of pentacles so maybe you are a male person watching this but I have more female watching my videos but nevertheless you're more a feminine um, Taurus and he is pointing directly at you he's pointing directly at hey watch always the physical dimension watch what it is that holds you here and doesn't make you go up high where you go above this line where you can fly forward and know what it is that you have to do you have the horse to go forward and you have twice the Libra that's saying I see for you what it is that you need to be doing because you have to do the speaking your word. You have to create an emotional connection to the material world, right? And the emotional world is helping you to do that because of you having 19 cups and those 19 cups are speaking to you in the number 10, which is the wheel of fortune and the wheel of fortune is saying it keeps going it keeps spinning it keeps changing you keep looking at it and you keep using your voice to speak your word like this trumpet it's almost like you're blasting it out you want to tell everybody how amazing this kind of energy is how amazing it is to have the two of cups 
and also how you have realized that there is sometimes a lot of illusion in this world but you learn and grow through it and then comes the hermit one more time so you have um, a three times nine portal you have the amber and you have the amber in between the hermit so maybe there's a hermit a Virgo in your life or maybe you are feeling that you really need to go deep within you already saw it here you looked at the ten of cups and you said okay I'm gonna make myself really happy and here you are sitting in the desert knowing that this path that you have taken is a path that goes first within so that you can release that you can learn that you can go further into the 32 which is the jeweled web the connectivity to all things and here comes a five again right the rainbow the color of the rainbow is an illusion and of course we have here the seven seven two times seven portal that is saying creativity in your higher chakra is helping you to lead this energy out there nevertheless you also have to understand that the rainbow and the light is bringing you into this beautiful jeweled web where the connectivity to all beings to all there is out there is helping you is giving you an understanding that you have to connect deeply within yourself to actually see that web see that connectivity right and of course this is also a six which we have here the six the six six portal right and six six is again the understanding that you learning by doing you learning by taking action you learning by raising your consciousness high above high as high as possible because you are the number seven you can go above the illusion you can go high up and realize that something here is telling you learn and grow learn and don't let this illusion to stop you from experiencing enjoying your life right so the seven seven the high uh lounge ashwa sanchalan asana is here right sometimes i don't see it it's really interesting so when i cut the video in the video when i cut it i'm like seeing so many things that i wasn't able to say in the reading but it's okay because otherwise they go way too long but you have the horse so take this position and meditate meditate deep within you what is it that you want to plant what kind of seed you want to plant that will grow fertile that will grow very clearly that will because you also have Taurus Taurus is that earthiness and of course it's it's happening that you are becoming yourself so strong like a horse determined willed magic and a leader and you're gonna bring the healing to the people you really are gonna bring a powerful healing of emotions because already last time right listen carefully and see from within what kind of thoughts affect your healing and now you're getting a horse that's saying yes you are going to have to look at this and you go and see this from all perspectives lying down and from the sides from the right from the left you are now bringing the healing energy of water to us through this Venus in Cancer. Wow, what a beautiful reading, right? Sometimes I'm really amazed how much these cards are really 
powerfully talking to each other. So I hope I see you in the next reading because then the Earth is turning in such a way that when we look into the Sun, we see the constellation Leo behind it. And we have Jupiter in Leo, we have the success, we have the understanding that yeah, we have to take actions. The emotions are important. You have 19 of those. That's a 10. That's the wheel of fortune. But now you need to take action and we will look at that in the next reading, of course. Until then, I thank you so much for being with me and I wish you a beautiful meditation in this new moon. Namaste.